Hey there, Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon, Cancer Rising. Welcome to your reading. Um, this is for November. We are looking at issues around Virgo. Virgo is the sixth house. This is work-life balance. This is your day-to-day -day routines and activities. This is your physical health and well-being. Um, but we also have the second house of finance coming up. And so I feel like there's an emphasis here on um, how do you um, self-value, self-worth, self-esteem, and finance the second house. How do you um, you factor all the details of your life around this, right? Your vitality. We have the sun showing up here. So the sun right now will be in Scorpio and Sagittarius in November. Um, if you are a Cancer rising, that would be your sixth house. And so that would be definitely that energy of bringing things into balance. But um, I feel like uh, it's the vitality and the life force. Um, there's a need here to, um, to manage those energies in a very balanced way. Also, when I get the two, when I get the two, I oftentimes feel like there's a, a need to connect in to your higher self. Um, so let's see what else. Um, organization, they're saying organization. So, um, Virgo energy is definitely a nice organizing energy. Hmm. Okay, if you find that your energy, the sun, the vitality, right, as we move into the winter months, um, it becomes difficult. Um, I'm a Cancer sun. It becomes difficult for me to to really um, put my light out there because I get I actually feel a depleting, right? I'm I'm, I'm solar powered. So um, it, it we have the little wolf girl, which says it's all right to be alone. And so if you need to pull your energy in to protect yourself at this time, to reorganize your life in a way that it works for you, that allows you to participate in um, with the energy that you have in a way that is, yeah, you're, you, okay. You're, you're, it's, this is your higher self. Your higher self is asking you to, um, to nurture yourself. You're so good at nurturing everybody else. Can you nurture yourself? So we have the snake showing up here, but that snake is about to take a bite out of the apple. So the snake is on the caduceus, uh, the, the symbol, right, of, of, of the healing energy that is associated with, uh, with um, doctors use it, right? The little sign, you know, um, and it's got the snake that's coming around it. It's got the masculine energy and the feminine energy. It's, it's both being in balance, which is super interesting to me because here in the center of the reading, first off, we have the well. It is the wishing well, but what I feel like in this particular case this is about you dipping into your well um, how dry is it? Do you have, are you filling yourself up enough, right? Do you have the energy and the vitality? And, and I almost feel like going within is what allows you to bring up, because look, it looks like it's bringing up the light, okay? And so here we have the divine masculine and we have the divine feminine. Well, masculine, feminine, I think I said backwards. But um, this is energy around balancing in order to have something in the well to bring up. Right? There's a need to really balance your energies when I'm looking at this Virgo and this vitality. Um, around matters of self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, do you do you put yourself high enough on your list, right? So when you think about the people that you care for and you nurture, do, do you ever put yourself on that list? Right? Cancer has a habit of not doing that. Um, and so you're being reminded, you're, you're being reminded that you need to rest, right? And so with a snake here. With the snake here, this is Seven of Wands energy, because um, it's um, the Queen of Wands energy. It is a creative force. Um, it is a it is a creative force that um, that allows you to, in your quiet space, be able to create. And so it's almost like setting up a barrier, a protection, right? I. I I think if you need to be alone, Cancer, you should ask for it, right? Um, and if you ask for it, you should be able to receive it. <laughs> and if you don't, well, I, I, you know how, you know how we are. Those pinches will come out. Okay, so 
you're wondering where the luck is. Well, let me just tell you, um, Cancer, luck is on the way. Jupiter is currently in Gemini. What does that mean? That means that next year in June, Jupiter is in Cancer. It spends a year there. So I almost feel like, though, part of this is about creating the foundation in which the clover can grow, like the right conditions. So what can you do now to create space in your life for something good to come in, right? What is luck? Luck is when hard work meets opportunity, right? And so the opportunities are coming. What is the hard work? Well, right now the hard work is you taking care of yourself. Um, when the energy that is draining you is this little puppy that wants to go out to play, I feel like it's a struggle. It feels like you're struggling maybe to get out of bed, to have energy to go do anything. Maybe you're so busy you get home and you just flop down on the sofa and watch movies. Um, it, it's, it's this energy of, of not having vitality and energy. So how do we recharge that, right? How do we recharge that? Part of it is the struggle here of the bear. So this bear is about financial uh, success, um, but it's the polar bear, which always feels more like spirit coming to us, and he's swimming through the waters of our emotions, right? And, and so we have this water that's showing up here in this nice flow of energy. Second house is resources. We have finances up here. Um, there is something about connecting the divine masculine and divine feminine. So that would be being open to receiving and then taking the appropriate action. And I almost feel like it's about receiving the guidance that you need, knowing what it is, what the next step is, managing your energy well, and taking the appropriate reaction, appropriate action. Now what's interesting about this masculine energy is he's got the sign of Mars hanging around his neck. Well, Mars is in Cancer right now. So Mars is in Cancer. I'm going to go to my book here because I want to get the dates kind of right. <laughs> um, so Mars is in Cancer. Mars moves into, in November, let me see here, where's Mars? Uh, Mars is in Cancer for just the first five days. On the fifth, he moves into Leo, right? I think that does with the sun, the sun representing Leo, I think there does, and it'll be in, if you're Cancer Rising in your second house, I do think that it actually it feels better, like a little more fired up, a little more energetic, a little more willing to get out there and do stuff, but he is going to do a retrograde. And so Mars is going to station retrograde at six degrees of, of Leo on November, on, I'm sorry, on December 5th. So you have four weeks. You have most of November to like hit the gas a little because then when he goes retrograde, he's going to retrograde back into your sign and he gets there in January. Okay. Um, and there will be a need for you to rest. We have this transformational energy as energy of the outgoing, the need to rest. So I really want to encourage you, um, here in the United States and other places in the world, I know the time's about to change, right? And if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into the darkness, right? We're going into the darkness. And um, this almost reminds me of like the full moon in Cancer that comes up, but that would be in December. I think it's in December, you know? Yeah, it would have to be in December, um, maybe January. But anyway, so, there is something about pulling our energy in as it gets darker, right? And so using your energy wisely, keeping things in balance. Maybe you need to have a real connecting in time with spirit. Maybe you need to have more heart to heart connections. Some of this energy does make me feel like you could be in a partnership where sometimes you're doing the, you're, you're the one doing the work and sometimes they are. And, and so there needs to be a give and a take, a flow of some sort that is trying to create a balance here. In the heart space, we have the bridge. So you're moving from one energetic stage to the other, right? And, and, and that's happening. This has to do with that solstice. I really feel like the solstice that's coming up, but that doesn't come up, you know, for another month. So what do we have here?
we have the inner child, we have play, and we have past life healing. Fuchsia and Veldspar, okay, innocence of self-awareness, right? And then this, this little sunflower is here. More fun, jokes, laughter, please. There's a need for you to have a little bit more fun. And then there's this darkness of going into the shadow, the dipitase and larkspur. Past life healing, letting go of anger, bringing in forgiveness. This is a balancing of energies, right? It's a real balancing of energies balancing that allows you to bridge from one section of your life to the other to bring the vitality in it's a, a very much of a reorganizing so you may be actually reorganizing your schedule more so that you have more time some of you may have been going through a breakup right there's a separation here between the masculine and the feminine energy and it says it's all right to be alone um uh, making peace with yourself to bring that energy together feels important. Wow. Be brave and be honest. We have the night. We have a lot of cards that came out. This this tells me that spirit is saying you got a lot going on and they are right here with you. Yeah. Energy. Embrace energy of peace. Again, back with this forgiveness. Now, this separation with your partner might be a little break might be a breakup it might be uh, not seeing things eye to eye but there's an opportunity to bring that back together and if not with that person then with yourself with your higher self or creating space for someone new in the future you have shift your perspective the air guardian that is this bridging energy up here in the, in the heart space. Be open to receiving the messages that are coming in. The toughest thing I ever found was that I had to forgive myself for not being perfect. Virgo energy always makes you feel like you got to be perfect, right? You can't make any mistakes. You got to be super organized. You got to know the right way to do things all the time. That's a lot of pressure that you put on yourself. And that energy is an energy of choice and decision making for cancer. And so sometimes it's like, um, you know, we we try and we strive so hard to never make a mistake that when we do, we either one won't admit it or two, we won't give ourselves um, any grace or space around and we get angry with ourselves. Like, how could I mess that up so bad? Right. Um, but maybe all it was was a learning and growth opportunity. I feel like with this bear sitting over here in the area of the obstacle to overcome, there's a need for you to ask for the help that you need um, from spirit. There is a need to ask for the forgiveness, you know, during this time. And a lot of times, you know, um, crossover loved ones could really access our energy easier to communicate at this time of the year during November. Right. And so it could be that maybe someone has passed on and you don't think there's anything you could do about it, but you can. They hear you. And when you forgive in your heart, that energy cuts the cord that binds all the negative energy between the two of you. Wow. So much summer energy coming through. So for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, you are supposed to be getting out there and having some fun. You might be coming out of the dark times. It says bask in joy and light. And then you have the crazy lace agate with the sunflower. And to me... This is very creative energy, but for everybody, this is creative energy that comes through the flow of having fun, of having joy. And if you are being weighed down by um, anger, resentment, and unwillingness to forgive, right? I think Mars and Cancer can really bring that stuff up, uh, not just for us, but for everybody, like brings that up that energy. But when Mars moves, on the 6th or the 5th of the 6th into into Leo that is a chance for you to rejuvenate to refresh to lighten up and to find the joy in life again and so take a hold of that energy and really use it and to maximize it it's almost like the bee runs out there well flies out there 
from flower to flower to flower, collecting the nectar to bring it home to create the honey. Why? Because they need to store it up because it's only summer for so long. And Mars is only going to be in Leo for so long, right? Four weeks. And then he retrogrades back into Cancer. And when he retrogrades back, well, he stations retrograde. So he's actually there for longer than that, right? So it's almost like eight, nine weeks that he'll be in, in Leo. So it gives us more time, but kind of some of it's, a, it's not as bright, but it's still bright. Okay, so there is a need to really make uh, honey while the sun shines. Because um, when we get to that full moon in Cancer, somewhere around that space and time, um, Mars is going to be backing up into Cancer. And Mars backs up into Cancer on January 6th. It looks like January 6th, January 7th. And um, I feel like that full moon in Cancer is important. So that's on the 13th. So by the time we get to that, you're going to want to pull your energy in again, right? When, 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 when Mars has gone back into Cancer. And so what you want to do now is create a structure, right? Like when I see Virgo and I see the honeycomb, it has that organized thing. So right now, Use this energy to get stuff organized, to enjoy life, go have some fun. You're going to want downtime. That is going to happen. You're going to need to rest and repair, right? Get yourself on a schedule too where you know you're you're utilizing the majority of the daylight and then you are resting properly at night, not staying up late with all the blue lights on, you know, the videos, the the TV, the 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 phone, right? Um, allowing your brain to settle back and rest. And so you're in a bridging time where you need to, right now, collect the sunshine while you can. We're moving from this one energy into the other. Because the darker energy, the quieter energy, darker doesn't mean um, evil. Darker means um, more introspective. You know how the sun... And the moon reflects the sun. You're ruled by the moon. It is the nighttime energy, right? The rest and the repair and the recover. That's coming. And I think when, when Mars retrogrades back through your sign, I think during that period, you're going to want to rest, repair, recover, right? Whatever is going on. And so the more you're putting into something right now, then that will sustain for you. And so Mars retrogrades, um, ends on February 24th and at 17 degrees of Cancer, and then he moves forward again. And, and Mars doesn't actually get back into Leo until April 19th. So we have this long transit and working with Mars energy can be challenging. Um, but I think during that retrograde period, uh, if you use it right, then you'll be ready when he stations direct to be able to start putting energy back out there. There's a lot of wisdom opportunity coming through. It says be devoted and be committed. And I think what this means is create a spiritual practice, right? So you show up at the same time every day for your spiritual practice. That could be while you're in the shower. That could be you get up in the morning and you 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 journal for five, ten minutes. Um, it could be, I have so many ducks. For me, it's pulling cards and journaling. I like to do it in the evening before I go to bed. But it's showing up on the regular to allow spirit to be able to reach you because spirit is trying to. So right now there's a change that needs to be made. Be brave and be honest, right? Embrace the energy of, um, of what is happening here. This is coming to terms with something in your life that's difficult. And when I look at the well here, I mean, it could be something from your childhood that's being brought up that needs to be revisited and only revisited to allow the healing to happen, to regenerate to become more whole, more complete. 
for the next phase. And so the shift of perspective, this knowledge and this wisdom that's trying to come in here, this is going to allow you maybe to see things from a more adult aspect and allow you to forgive uh, whoever, whatever, along the way. And we don't forgive them for them. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? That's the way. Honest to God. I mean, really and truly, you are responsible for your own soul. And your soul right now is asking you to let something go that hurts you because it hurts you. Not because you're a better person or you're a bigger person or, you know, um, it'll make them feel better or what. No, it's because your soul needs you to understand that whatever happened was an opportunity for you to learn to grow as a soul into the kind of person that can forgive. Because forgiveness is the ultimate act of love for yourself and for others. But really, the biggest challenge was learning how to forgive myself for not being perfect. That was the biggest challenge. And then after that, I got to tell you, I look at other people and I'm like, well, I mean, I, I wasn't able to do that. So why should I expect somebody else to be able to do that? You know? So quite the journey. All right, kids, I hope you found that helpful. I'm on Facebook every day. Um, sometimes videos, sometimes posts, but come on over and join me. I am open for personal readings. I'd love to, to, um, to help you through this moment in time because I really get it. So uh, information for that is in the description box below. You guys take really good care of yourselves. Work with the flow of energy. When you have it, use it. When you don't, don't push yourself. You don't need to. It's okay. Work with the flow of energy. You're a water sign. That's how you thrive. Great. Right. I'll talk to you again soon.